Okay, Aaron Kay, it seems to me that you're trying to make the claim that um, these amazing scientific discoveries that have been uh, produced in the last couple centuries and even before are the result of creationists because of their creationism. Well, let's set something straight right now. Creation scientists are not your standard creationist or your believers in creationism. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't even refer to those who simply have a belief in a creation event, whatever that event may be and whatever it may entail. I would not call them creationists and I would not equate them to modern day creation scientists and modern day creationists. Um, now the other thing is that it wasn't because of their creationistic views that they may or may not have held that led them to the scientific discoveries that they um, are credited for, but instead it's their actual science that led to them to their scientific discoveries. In other words, it's the science that they did that led them to discover these things we now have in science. So it wasn't their creationism, in quotes on that one, that led them to these discoveries. No, it was science that led them to these discoveries. Scientific thought, scientific disciplines, scientific methods. With a few exceptions, I mean, you know, Wright Brothers, a lot of their stuff was simply trial and error. Um, but there were some scientific aspects in there too. There were some scientific methodologies in what they did. So, it's an invalid comparison. It's kind of like saying that um, there have been several racists that have contributed to modern uh, science and modern culture in some way or another. Um, and it's like saying that because that these because these races contributed to modern science and modern culture, that racism is somehow correct, and we should think we should thank the racists for this. Uh, no, um, I wouldn't do that. So your attempt here is a bit fallacious. Um, and the second thing, you ask what evolution has done for us. So let's um, talk about what evolutionary theory has done for us. Well, first of all, it's allowed us to understand the biological world in greater detail than we ever could before. Um, that's a wonderful thing right there. Secondly, concepts of evolution, um, in other words, natural selection, has allowed us to, for in some cases, uh, computer architecture, um, the program architecture in some computers, um, is based on evolutionary models. Basically, there are these architectural, these program architectures are allowed to try many different ways, and the ones that are successful are retained, while the ones that are not successful are uh, deleted, not contained, not retained. So that's an evolu that's, and it's given us some very powerful and very uh, efficient programs. Um, evolution, the evolutionary uh, modeling has been used to uh, develop all sorts of things. So uh, along these same fashions, basically, you run a computer model that. Uh, that um, develops different varieties of whatever you're modeling, and the ones that work and the ones that um, are selected for are retained, while the ones that are not and the ones that are inefficient are removed. So here, evolutionary theory working in our technology to give us faster, more efficient technology. Also, our understanding of evolution has led directly to um, the discovery of why things like bacteria can become resistant to antibiotics 
or why uh, insects can become resistant to insecticides. It's allowed us to understand why certain pathogens can change and then reinfect people. Um, a good example is most people who have had chickenpox are immune to chickenpox. However, over about 30 to 80 years, the chickenpox virus, and I'm just writing those numbers off the top of my head, I'm not entirely certain about that anymore, but you know, if you want to know, go look it up. I mean, that's a good thing to do. That's what scientists do. We explore. Um, but the virus does change significantly enough that some people who have had the virus before and were immune, um, well, they can be reinfected. Um, and you can get chicken pox more than once in your lifetime. Luckily, I've only had it once. Uh, one of my friends, he got it twice. So, um, and you know, it's a rare occurrence, but it does occur. Um, so, you know, evolution's, uh, evolutionary theory allows us to understand how these things happen. Um, and from that, we can derive technologies and methodologies that allow us to circumvent some of these pathogens. We're getting better and better at it. Um, recent discovery, uh, I can't remember what it was, but it basically circumvents the ability of HIV um, when it comes to infecting T-cells. This could be a potential vaccine that can be used on the uninfected as well as the infected to completely eradicate this virus. So, you know, this is what evolutionary, evolutionary science gives us. To basically put it, Aaron King, your entire video was based on a fallacious argument. Um, these people discovered what they discovered because of science, because they were studying science. They didn't discover what they discovered because they were creationists. Um, and the truth is, most of them weren't, like I said, they were not the creationists that we have today. They simply happened to have been brought up in a religious framework where a creation event was claimed to have occurred, and they may never have questioned it. Uh, many of these people lived in a time when you didn't question it. Newton didn't question the existence of God because, well, at that time, most people never did. Um, oh, and about this little comment that Darwin was a creationist, he was raised in a religious framework, so he was taught to believe in a creation event. But as he progressed um, through his sciences, he came to the conclusion that God is unnecessary to explain anything in the natural world. Hence, God should not. God does not exist. Darwin ended his life as an atheist, for good or bad, doesn't matter. So no, he wasn't a creationist when he developed the theory of evolution. And secondly, I want to point out that all these discoveries were not made in a vacuum. Um, Darwin's work was based on earlier work. Um, Darwin's idea of evolution wasn't entirely original, but he was the one to first put forth a testable model um, when it came to uh, descent with modification via natural selection. Um, in Darwin's time, the reason why he published his book, uh, he did it fairly quickly, um, was because another young biologist had come up with nearly the same hypotheses that he had, so he knew he had to publish his book on the origin of species, or um, he would not be credited with the discovery. So most of these scientific discoveries would have occurred anyway, where, irregardless of the people that we credit them, credit them with, um, with maybe one or two minor exceptions. Again, it's a totally fallacious argument. You need to do better.